Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. And today, it's a book by a booktuber. I'm talking about a book by a booktuber today, and it is this book. This is Out Among the Ice Beacons by Gareth Howells. Out Among the Ice Beacons by Gareth Howells. There's Gareth there. Although, if you want to get a better look at Gareth, you should check out his amazing channel, Books, Songs, and Other Magic. Books, Songs, and Other Magic with Gareth Howells, a beloved figure here on BookTube. And if you haven't seen his channel, definitely check it out. It's great. It's a great channel. Really, it is. And Gareth is ridiculously talented. Gareth can write. Gareth can sing. He's on a band that's really good, Bemis. I think it's called Bemis. Anyway, it's a great band, and he's got, he's got a great voice, and he can like write songs and everything, as well as writing books. And he wrote this one, Out Among the Ice Beacons. A science fiction novel, his first novel, actually. And he sent it to me very kindly. He sent this book to me a while ago. And it took me a long time to get to it. But when I did get to it, actually, for me, was the perfect time, actually, to get to it. In fact, I have a hard time disassociating the book from what was going on in my life at the time that I read the book. And so I'll talk a little bit about that. So when I, the day after I started this book, I like read a chapter of it and really liked it. And the next day, my little dog, Pumpsy, got sick. And I had to take Pumpsy to the emergency vet because it was like late Saturday night or early Sunday. And the only place to take your dog to for an emergency is this emergency vet. So I went there and since it's at the emergency vet and it's the only place open, it was a long wait. And so you can imagine what that's like when you're worried about your dog. Anybody that has a dog can imagine what that's like with my dog being sick and I'm worried, I don't know how serious it is. So it was a long wait for Pumpsy to be seen and then while Pumpsy was seen, there was a long wait. The whole thing took a long time. And this was the book I had with me. Thank goodness I had this book and I didn't, and I wasn't reading like The Girl Next Door or something. I. Fortunately, I was reading this one because this is the kind of book you want to be reading when you're in a situation like that. The kind of book that can take you away mentally from whatever is going on. This book worked really well for that. It's a science fiction story where these three kids are transported to another world. And it was actually a really well-written, engrossing story. And so... It did work for that, where I was stuck in the vet, in the emergency vet reading this book, and this helped take my mind off the situation. And it was a bad situation. Unfortunately, as it turned out, Pumpsy had stomach cancer, and she passed away two days later. And I was still reading this book at the time. So all that went on while I was reading this book. And it makes me think about the fact that, it's, that books are a great thing just for that, for those times in your life where things are not going great. And how books can help you through those times just by taking your mind off of whatever is going on and kind of make you think about something else. Books are, are wonderful for that. And that's happened to me a few times in my life where... I've been going through a rough patch or whatever, and a book helps me through. Usually, those books are, are by people who are dead or that I will never talk to. So I, I have never been able to thank an author for doing that for me. But it, here, Gareth, not only do I know him, but he might even be watching this. So Gareth, thank you. Thank you for writing and sending this book to me. It helped me out tremendously, and I appreciate it. So, let's talk about the book itself. 
a science fiction book about Julian, a genius level kid, school kid, and his father has recently passed away. His father was also a genius. He was an inventor. He invented this machine that can transport itself through space and possibly time. I get the idea that it could travel through time as well, but I'm not exactly sure. But definitely it could travel through space and possibly other dimensions. It can take you other places, this machine. And it's just sitting around in the garage because Julian's father died before he could ever test out his, invent his invention. And Julian's mom doesn't know what the heck this thing is. It's just something her husband was working on. He was always working on something. But Julian knows because Julian found his father's notes and Julian's really, really smart. So Julian knows what this thing is and he wants to take it out on a, on a ride. He wants, to, he wants to use this machine to explore but he doesn't necessarily want to do it by himself. The problem is Julian is one of those kids who doesn't really have any friends. And the closest thing this poor kid has to friends are these two other kids that are always picking on him. Uh, Lee and what was his name? Danny, Danny and Lee. These two other kids that are always picking on poor Julian. But Julian figures, you know what? These are kind of big guys. I'll take them along with me, you know, just in case I run into any trouble. And so these two other kids, Danny and Lee, they're like, okay. They decide that they'll go along with Julian just because they want to make fun of him when this machine eventually doesn't work. But guess what? It works. And they are transported into another world or onto another world which seems to be a kind of ice planet. It is Malois. Malois? Malois? I don't know how to pronounce this planet because I can't pronounce anything. But I knew, do know that the Quarley people live there. The Quarley people. And these aliens that inhabit this planet, they look kind of like big, hairy, yeti type of creatures. But they're, they are actually a pretty advanced civilization. And they have a pretty complex culture. And they have cities underneath the ground. And they live in these underground cities and these other shelters. And they have a complex system. They have kind of a totalitarian government. Uh, it's kind of a theocracy. The religion of this planet is uh, very complicated and kind of dominates the culture. And as it turns out, the fact that these three kids have shown up on this planet can really upset their culture. Because according to their religion, there are no creatures that live on other planets. There, that does not exist according to this religion. So these three, even being here at all, endangers uh, the civilization. But since it's a totalitarian civilization... There are some rebels on this planet that want to take advantage of that. It's a really interesting book, full of some really cool ideas in it. It talks a lot about society, culture, and religion, and how religion can change or even dominate a culture. And so this book kind of starts off as kind of a YA type of story it felt that way to me where you have these three kids and there's a lot of humor in the story to start off with and then they go off on this adventure but once they get to this planet things start getting serious and i don't want to give it away or too much of the story away because you should read this book but our three our three heroes actually end up in a lot of danger and in some pretty tense situations. Uh, Julian, particularly. And Julian got knocked out, like, twice. Poor Julian suffered some head injuries in this story. Poor kid. It was tough. They had a tough time, our heroes, on this other planet. But Gareth, he wrote an interesting story in that 
you have this complex society and he's he's delving into all of these issues but he also has these kids and they're all kind of funny so you have you have different elements that work together in this story and they actually work together better than i would would have thought that they would have it is not a perfect book this is a print on demand this is a you know self published book and I think this is the second edition of it. This is the revised edition. But even the revised edition has some errors that stick out. This book could have benefited greatly just from going through one pass through a professional editor. Uh, there are a couple moments in this book where a character says something and it's obviously supposed, it's not supposed to be that character who says it. And there's like a moment where like, I think it was Danny said something and then Danny answered him because the wrong name was used for the character. That happened at least twice, but it was obvious. Uh, and it's that kind of thing happens. But usually you would have an editor that would just fix that stuff. Although I've seen that plenty of times in books that I've read that have gone through editors. I've seen errors like that. But one pass through an editor would have fixed that. Also, I understand why it wasn't. This book could have been longer. It could have benefited from being a little bit longer than it was, I think. Just because of the level of complexity of the society uh, that, that is on this world. I think that, well, there were moments in it where you were just told a lot of stuff about the society. You know, you said, okay, this is how this works and this is what's going on here. And it works, the way Gareth writes it, it works. But it would have been better to be shown than to be told. However, that couldn't happen with a book of this length because it would have taken a much longer book to have accomplished that. Just because of the level, the level of complexity of the society and what's going on and the history. There's his, there's a part of what's going on in the society has to do with the history of the society and all the complex political goings on and the different characters. And there's a lot going on in this book and it's not tremendously long. So you're going to get a little exposition here and there where it would have been a better book, I think, if it had had room to kind of show you some of that stuff through the story. But it didn't have that kind of space. It would have taken a book twice this long, at least, to be able to do that. And one of the benefits of it being as long as it is, is that the pace is really, really good. I mean, it just, you just go right through this book. Uh, the pace is steady. And there's interesting stuff that's happening all throughout the book. So it works, even with those those issues that I'm talking about. It works really well. One of these days, perhaps we will get a special edition of this book. If Gareth, Gareth ever decides to revise it and make a special edition, I would buy it right away, just because I have such an affection for this book now. But, you know, I think he's off writing other things now. That's how it goes. Once he's, once he's big time, once he's a big time author, uh, maybe we'll get a revised edition. We'll see. We'll see. But as it stands, very entertaining book. I enjoyed this a lot. Uh, it's a really good book by Gareth, uh, excellent writer, and he's got other books that I still have to read. So maybe I'll be talking about another one of his books sometime soon. But as for right now, that was Out Among the Ice Beacons. I hope you check it out it's available on amazon so yeah check out gareth's book check out gareth's, gareth's channel books songs and other magic and i will catch you next time roger says that he will be back next time so i should be joined by roger we'll see he's been so moody lately okay guys i will catch you next time